Well, my apologies for coming at the last minute, but I was at another event uh, just by coincidence that today is also the alumni day uh, for the Graduate School of Art Sciences. We have really, really great talks there. So I'm um, just encourage you that in a few years, you can be qualified as alumni if you come here and you will enjoy these meetings as well. Um, <clears throat> I was asked to address the question, why did I choose Harvard? And I always tell people that the answer is very simple. Harvard chose me. So let me give you how I came here, the, the story. 28 years ago, I applied to Harvard. I applied to Harvard not because I thought I had any chance to get in, just be honest, precisely because I thought I would not have any chance. Now, how could that happen? Well, <clears throat> most of you, I guess, you have, you're just coming out of, uh, uh, you know, a, a college, but before you, um, <clears throat> before you go to college, you probably was in high school, you may still remember <coughs> that in the U.S. they will tell you, or in other places will tell you that you should apply to schools that are safe, and match, and the reach, right? All right, okay, you, you know that terminology? Not in China. We, we have a much more blunt language. We say you apply to schools, you cannot get in to the schools you don't want to go, All right? So, <laughs> So what, what are the schools that I cannot get in? Obviously, that was Harvard. So I applied to Harvard, and I did receive the application material. Because I was not taking that very seriously, I don't know how many of you remembered, there was a question about how much money you have in order to come to Harvard. I put down a very big zero. <laughs> <laughs> There's a follow-up question, which is how much money you need in order for you to come to Harvard? Now, at that point, my English was very limited. So was my diplomatic skill. So what I put down was, if you don't give me money, I won't come. <laughs> Apparently, it worked. <laughs> That's how I started. And, uh, and in fact, there's the other part of the story that I did apply to other places. I got into other places. But at that time in China, it was not easy to leave China. You need to apply for passport, everything, the new visas. And the only reason I was allowed to leave, because one of my uh, department, I, I was also teaching then, there's a, a vice uh, a department chair who came to the United States to visit. He knows the system. He literally took my uh, this admission letter, went to the high official, said, you know, nobody goes to Harvard from here, so you have to let this guy go. That's how I, how I was allowed to leave. Otherwise, in any other schools, they are all wonderful schools, but unfortunately, they won't let you to, to go. Okay, so Harvard is Harvard. So I owe enormous to, to Harvard, both for the alumni support who made it possible for me to come here. I really came here with $50 borrowed, like in a fiction. That was really true, okay? And uh, so now I want to uh, address the, the, uh, the next three questions. I was, uh, I was asked to tell you, what are the three reasons you should come to Harvard? So I'm, I'm going to give you three reasons, from the most obvious one to, to the least obvious one, okay? The most obvious one you probably have heard a lot uh, the previously must be, Harvard just have this enormous resources for you. Okay? When I talk of resources, it's not just about the money. We actually don't have much money, even we're sort of most well in down uh, university, but we have the human resources. I mean, the, 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 the intellectual environment is just, is just let me use a, a, a not great, Worse, but it's crazy. Let, let me put it this way. <laughs> because if you, you don't have to do anything. If you just go to listen to these, these talks, it, it will, you will be just, if, how can I have so much, to, how can I have any time to listen to, to this many talks? There are just so much in, uh, offered on, on the campus. So I think that that's the obvious one. I want to tell you the second one, which probably slightly less obvious. And that's one actually I am focusing on as the dean of the, uh, of the graduate school, is the type of training we provide. Now, obviously, anyone come to Harvard, you must be smart, right, okay? But when you leave Harvard, what, we, what we're trying to create is, what, what do people think a graduate student from, from Harvard? Other than, you know, this, this, this boy or girl must be great, must do great research, you know, everything. 
what is the additive value of being, uh, being a graduate student for, uh, in, from Harvard? So one thing we thought of very hard about, and in recent years we, we keep increasing the emphasis on that, is we really want to train people now these days, I don't know how many of you heard that phrase called T-shaped, okay? T-shaped means you have the, the depths. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> See? <laughs> okay, so this is double T-shaped. <laughs> So now let me just say specifically what we're doing to help you to become this, this T-shape uh, in a person. Many places you go, and almost any graduate school you go, you will be a teaching fellow, one way or the other, okay? Now, you probably know, or you probably have heard, most places that they probably just tell you to go to teach. You won't get much training. And here, we do lots of training before you go to teach. In, we have a box center of teaching and learning, and essentially every one of you, when you become teaching fellow, you will get a little videotape. You will be asked to do five minutes micro teachings, and you will be videotaped, and you will watch yourself. That's a pretty scary experience. <laughs> I'll tell you, I've done this myself. Did I do that? Yes, you did. You know, you'll be seeing all these little, uh, little things. But I, I, I want to say that 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 is, we are doing a lot, lot more than that. Um, there's at least, I think by now, that 10 departments that offer courses are really just about teach. I teach one myself in statistics called the Art and Practice of Teaching Statistics. I've been doing that for the past seven, eight years. Even now, I've become the dean. They say, you, you don't have to teach. I say, no, 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 I will keep teaching that because that's just so close to what I do, okay? So the course we do, I meet every other week we basically have the students present and ask questions. We have sessions on how to grade homework, how to, who are the Harvard undergraduate students? That's a really interesting session. Harvard undergraduate students are not shy. They will be asking, they will challenge you. Okay, how do you deal with that? So we, we, we have people do the voice coaching, your, your presence, how do you stand? We do, we do all those things. In my department, we also do a course on on teaching, uh, sorry, on writing and uh, publication. How do you develop, how do you go from having a research idea to the real publication? The way I did is I had one paper, I had many papers actually, I had one paper rejected by every major statistical journal. Took, took me 10 years to publish. For some strange reason, I kept every version Every version, every rejection letter, every revision letter, every comments. So I put all things together, a huge deck. That's the case study for my students. Okay, go through that with me, why I was not effective. Okay, so, 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 so we do, uh, do those things. I also want to mention very quickly, and you have to stop me because I, I can go, keep going. Now, now stop, you keep time. How many more minutes do I have? Four minutes, all right. I want to tell you this new initiative called the Harvard Horizons, and uh, once you come here, you will be uh, eligible for applying to this uh, new initiative, Harvard Horizons. What is it is, is that it, it's a new society, feature graduate students for having the best research. This year, we have selected eight scholars. The best part of this program is not just sort of choose those who have done the great research. We choose you because you have done the great research, but we want to present your most sophisticated ideas in five minutes to the general audience. So how do you do that? We provide six training sessions. We just done two. Including one session, we have this uh, professional uh, a coach. She trains university professors, uh, sorry, university presidents, you know, these uh, the Fortune 500 company CEOs, the deans when they go out to give, to, to give speeches. I challenge you to find another university that they will provide you a, a personal coach that who will be training the president as well as training you. So that's the type of thing uh, in, you know, we, will, uh, we will provide. Since I only have two minutes left, let me give you the last reason, the, probably the least obvious reason you probably never thought about, is that if you come here, someday you can become the dean. Now, I'm actually serious about that because recently, after I became a dean, I got interview, you know, request. One reporter asked me, say, did you ever dream to become a dean when you came here as a student? First, I thought about what kind of question is that? Who would have dreamed to be a dean? 
right? <laughs> I mean, at that point, you were just trying to survive, right? <laughs> but then when I s s reflect on the question, I say, you know, if you think about it, that's what Harvard does. Harvard takes someone like me, really penniless, clueless, from China at that point. They, I don't think they had any clue that this guy will be a future dean, right? You won't believe. But the fact is Harvard really had this transformative power. They basically took, the, the moment we, we are admitting you, I'm quite sure some of you will be the dean. It may not be here, but somewhere. You'll be all sorts of things. You don't know what you'll be getting to, just like I had no idea what I would become, right? And if I, if, in fact, if I knew I was gonna become dean, I may transfer, but that's a. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how the Harvard place transform you. You go one step off another, then you just start to enjoy what you're doing. So please come here, because you will enjoy. Thank you.